Guys, we are recording. So I gave you a picture and I asked you to write down what you think all these substances have in common. So there's your cornucopia or buffet of food. All right. Okay, there, there. Let's see what you came up with. They grow from the earth and they carry nutrients. They are vegetables, so they contain vitamin A. All have uh, used photosynthesis. Science is cool. Yes, it is. Anytime you write that, it's okay, whatever you wrote before, right? If you put science is cool. Right. Maybe. Don't start doing that. Oh, no, they're all doing it now. All right. They have water and contain pro proteins. Ooh, I like that. Right. They grow from the earth. Oh, dear. Okay, they're all vegetables except tomatoes. All right. They don't mess. Okay, pH, you guys referred to yesterday. All right. They have cells. Oh, I like the cells. That's cellular biology. We aren't there yet, but we're getting there. So if you were to ask me, I might say, uh, well, they all use carbohydrates for energy. They all store energy in lipids. They all use proteins to build their structural components, and they all store the instructions on how to make those proteins in things called nucleic acids. Those are the four major biomolecules. All right? So I know you didn't put that. That's okay. But that's kind of where we're headed today. So today we're going to look at all of the chemicals that life's made of, the role of carbohydrates, the role of lipids, the roles of proteins, and what nucleic acids do. So if I ever were to ask you the four biomolecules of life, they are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So now we're getting away from that kind of bonding pH type of chemistry, and now our chemistry is starting to build more complex molecules that we're going to eventually turn into parts of cells, and then eventually cells, then eventually tissues, and then organs, and so on, okay? So if you kind of want to, if you want to know where we are in the progression of this whole why are we doing chemistry and biology thing, this is why and where we're at. So the parts of a cell are made up of large complex molecules. We often call them biomolecules. Bio means life, right? Molecules means the molecules of life. And so large complex biomolecules are built, built sorry, from a few smaller, simpler repeating units arranged in an extremely precise way. What do we call those very simple units of biomolecules? Real quick, I'm going to ask you the question. What do we call them? Let's see what you guys took from chemistry last year. What do we call the simple units of biomolecules? The simple units of proteins, the simple units of carbohydrates, the simple units of nucleic acids, the simple units of protein. What do we call those? Take a guess. I'll give you a hint. Single or simple means mono in Latin. That's all I'm going to tell you. Type. Ten of you? Well, let's see what we came up with in five. Four, three, two, one. Okay, mono, mononucleic acids, monocellular molecules, monocells, mono, okay, monosimples. Uh, amino acids are type a uh, type of these. All right, so nobody write this word down somewhere. Monomer, okay? A monomer plus another monomer, if you keep adding them up, you end up with a, something called a polymer. You guys remember these now, maybe? Okay. No? So we start with simple monomers, and once we start adding them together like different Legos, they become these things called polymers. Poly means what? Many. Mono means one, right? Simple, more complex. Sometimes we have something in between where it just has two, and we'll, we'll talk about those later. That's 
We have to put die in there, but nobody's going to die. So the basic unit of most biomolecules contain atoms of carbon. And we know carbon atoms can form covalent bonds with as many as four other atoms. That should be general knowledge in this room now, right? Okay, no, no secret there. Why don't you guys show me, let's see, why don't you guys show me the structural formula of carbon bonding to four hydrogens? This should, this should be just a real simple thing you can do real quick. Draw carbon bonding to four hydrogen molecules, CH4. Please draw CH4. I don't need the atom, I don't need the Lewis dot, just the structural formula. If you guys can do this, you've gotten pretty much what I need you to get out of the chemistry portion of carbon body. I mean, I know it's real simple, but if you can understand that concept, you'll be, you'll be just fine in biology. 23 responses. Oh, let's see what we're drawing. Yay, there's one right, one right off the back. Yay. Uh, ooh, I don't, okay, you're working on it. I see. Ooh, no dots yet. We're doing structural, yes. Well, kind of with the dots, I don't know. There, there's a good one. Yay, there's another good one. Except I, I don't know what that is, two parallel lines. Whenever I see this, I think a high C, that really sugary juice box. Right. Yay, you guys are getting it. Oh, that's right, well, that's right, but I didn't ask for the atomic structure, Lewis dot. I asked for the structural. There's a the structural, yay. All right, good job. You guys get it. So when we look at, you guys, shh, when we look at carbon bonding, don't forget the carbon bonds the things four times, so it can create these things, these straight carbon chains. It can create these branched carbon chains. It can create rings, carbon rings, okay? Hey, sometimes I don't even have to tell you that carbon's there. If I draw this, this is automatically assumed. So if I gave you a polygon structure, you would have to know that each corner of the polygon is a carbon and that we know hydrogen is going to come off of it. So when biochemists draw carbon rings, they don't draw all the H's and C's in there. They get crazy. They just draw, in this case, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, a hexagonal structure. If it's a sugar, they draw, they draw a five carbon penta. It's called a pentose sugar because it has five sides. And so... You would have to know that that's carbon, that's carbon, that's carbon, that's carbon, that's carbon. And that carbon is going to need all of its four bonds fulfilled, right? Carbon can have a single bond. It can have a double bond. It can have a triple bond. Can it ever, let me just ask you the question, can carbon ever have a quadruple bond? Five, four, three, two, one. There's 23 of you. That means I should see 23 answers. So what you're telling me is carbon can do this. Can that ever happen? No. You guys need to know that. C4, or sorry, C2. <laughs> C2 it is not real. It doesn't happen. Okay. On paper it can happen, but in the real world it does not happen. I think, my, I think my chemistry teacher in college said that, that carbon cannot bond to itself. Think of it as inbreeding. It, it doesn't work. Okay. Right. So carbons are molecules made of sugars. Carbohydrates, sorry, are monomers made of sugar. Let's break down this word real quick. What's the first part of this word? Carbo. What is that referring to? Carbon, right? What's the second part of the word? Hydrate. What's that referring to? Carbon in the water, right? So what you're saying is carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is going to be a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Does that make sense? So the word carbohydrate is literally referring to the fact that you have carbon bonded to a water, basically. So if I look at a molecule, let me give you one example of a carbohydrate. It's glucose. It's right here, okay? 
and I were to draw out the formula for glucose. And my pen was working. And my pen is working. If I say it again, will it work? No. So C6H12O6. Is this a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio? Yeah. This is known as glucose. Glucose is a monomer of carbohydrates. Makes sense. If I add two sugars together, what do I get? What if I add two of these together? What do I end up with? Oops. What? Nobody? How about a, what do you think I call the monomers of sugars? Mono. They're called monosaccharides. Okay? And if I bring two monosaccharides together, you instantly want to say it's a polysaccharide, right? But we have this special one. It's called a disaccharide. What's the largest dis I'm sorry, what's the most common disaccharide out there? Table. We're talking about sweet things. Table sugar. Okay. So table sugar is a disaccharide. If I add glucose plus, plus fructose, I end up with sucrose. That's table sugar. Okay. This is a disaccharide. This is a monosaccharide. This is a monosaccharide. Two monosaccharides together give me a disaccharide, in this case sucrose. Any more than two, I am now something different. I'm no longer a disaccharide. I'm a... Well, I'm a... There's no try. I heard it. Polysaccharide. I'm sorry. I was ignoring you. I wasn't. I just got to say I was. So anytime you have more than two, it is now a polysaccharide. Okay. Hopefully you guys are just jotting notes down as we go. Anytime I start writing, that's your cue to like not just fill out the blanks, you know. Okay. So a sugar contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a ratio of one to two to one. Glucose is a is a common sugar found in grape juice. Let's break glucose down. If I wrote this, oh shoot, sorry guys, if I wrote down this, What would you tell me glucose is? What are those? They are carbohydrates, but they're monosaccharides. Okay? If I put them together and make galactose, what is galactose? There's two of them, so it's a disaccharide, right? May understand this concept? Okay. All right. If I added one more, it would then be a what? Polysaccharide. Okay. Go do another one. Yeah. Maltose. I screwed up because actually, maltose is glucose and glucose. Sorry. Galactose is actually glucose and fructose. It doesn't matter, though. Okay. But maltose is basically glucose and glucose. Just realized I did that. So two monosaccharides. I don't know what that weird M is. I'm not claiming that as mine. It's my mutated M. There we go. And this is, again, a disaccharide. We good there? Yeah. Okay. Any more? It's a poly. All right. 
So glucose is a monosaccharide or a single sugar. Two sugars can be linked to make a disaccharide. Anything more than two we call a polysaccharide. Suc, sucre, that is Latin for sugar or sweet. So that's where that word comes from, just so you know. Monosaccharides and disaccharides are considered simple carbohydrates. Polysaccharides are considered complex carbohydrates. What is an example of a complex carbohydrate? 23 of you should answer. I saw 23 so far. What is an example of a complex carbohydrate? You guys have been talking about the food pyramid since kindergarten, maybe even preschool. Give me an example of a complex carb. Complex carbohydrate. Complicate things. Complicate, complicate your carbs. What are they? Come on, where's my 23? I have, there you go, eight more. Come on, be wrong. I'm going to lock you out in five, four, three, two, one, and all right. Let's see what we have. Why oh, you quit drawing? Yeah, grain, bread, spaghetti, not that's. That's proteins and lipids. We'll get, we'll get there. We aren't there yet. Grains, chips, okay. Chips. Yeah. It's not wrong. It is starch. That's polysaccharide. All right. Bread, grains, bread, brown rice, noodles, grain, chicken. No, not chicken. Maltos. No. That's, we just went over that. Sugar. No. We just went over that. Those are disaccharides. Grain, bread. Okay. So, complex carbohydrates. Folks, if I keep adding glucose onto itself and just keep adding them, I end up with these really long chains of glucose. Sure. So if I just keep adding on glucose to, it, to more glucose molecules, I create this long chain of glucose. That is a polysaccharide, otherwise known as a complex carbohydrate. What takes longer for a five-year-old to break down? A spoonful of sugar or a slice of whole grain bread? Which one takes longer to break down? The bread. Why there are longer chains of monosaccharides all put together so they have to break down that long chain to get all the energy out of it. You guys understand that? Okay. Think of a bunch of glucose molecules all lined up next to each other, and you got, like, let's say you got a thousand of them, whatever. Over here in the table sugar, you have two. And the second it hits their mouth, it becomes what? Dissolved. And then it's now two monosaccharides, and they get instant energy. You ever seen like a little kid with a spoonful of sugar, like a pop? They bounce off the walls, right? Okay? Versus a nice, healthy, complex carbohydrate, which takes a long time to break down, and they get a long supply of energy. Right? Who plays sports in here? What do you eat? Before you work out, you, not right before, like an hour or two hours before, you eat a plate full of pasta. You know, proteins take like four hours to break down. Well, if you ate it four hours before, you'd be okay. You need to eat like a big plate of pasta if you're going to work out a lot, right? But you've got to eat it like an hour or two before. Because you're going to start breaking down that, that slowly as you need it. Okay, does that make sense? That's a hormonal thing. The five-hour energy, I'm glad you brought that up, okay, because your body naturally produces a lot of stuff that that makes your, your different glands secrete. And so five-hour energy, amp, all those monster drinks. Folks, listen to what's happened in your body for a second because I see you with those out there. I don't know who, I know I'm not talking to all of you, but you are forcing your glands to release hormones 
like your thyroid gland, you're, you're forcing them to release things in your bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there, okay? And like, let's say you were supposed to release, your, your, your thyroid is supposed to release, release a hormone slowly throughout the day so you have energy uh, so that you know when you're supposed to go to sleep at night. Well, if you force it to release it to keep you awake, you don't get this gradual decrease of that hormone in your bloodstream. You just jack it up all day and then you crash, right? Does that sound healthy? No. You're supposed to have this normal high amount of serotonin and different endorphins in the morning and it slowly breaks down throughout the day and then at night you're like, oh, I've done everything I need to do and you go to sleep. Versus, right? Yes. That is a myth, but yes. Yes. It has protein in it. I mean, just, just eat some protein. After. You should eat protein after you work out to replenish. It has proteins and sugar. I guess it has everything you need right then, but the, just drink a regular glass of milk. Way better for you. Okay. Minus all the sugar. I just found a science last year that showed that chocolate milk is better for you. Like, to drink after workout. I would argue that till the day I die. But at any rate, cells use carbohydrates for sources of energy, structural materials, and cellular identification. We're going to talk more about uh, glycoproteins and how they're used as surf cell surface markers in later units. Uh, they are a major source of energy for many organisms, including us. We use glucose for our primary source of energy. That means no matter what you eat, I don't care what it is, simple carb, complex carb, well, Proteins are a little different. We'll talk about those later. But all of the carbohydrates you eat, the only way you're going to get energy to fuel your body is through glucose. So you ever hear of those like low-sugar diets or no-sugar diets? Well, no sugar is okay, but no carbs is not okay. okay. Your body runs off of carbs. We are built to break down carbs and utilize the energy from them. It's called glycolysis. It's what fuels every cell in your body, and it is not healthy to eat a diet that contains only protein. And I'll explain to you why later. Yes? You cannot be allergic to glucose or you would not be alive. You're thinking of gluten, something completely different. Okay? If you were allergic to glucose, you would not have made it past, oh, let's say a zygote, which is a fertilized egg. Okay? Yeah, because you need it. That's how we get energy. This will become more relevant in, like, chapter... Nine. Don't worry about it yet, okay? <laughs> oh, well, if you, here's the thing. Let's rewind the clock. We've talked about this already, but a hundred years ago, I couldn't walk out in the woods and find the snicker tree or the Milky Way. I mean, I could find the Milky Way, but not like in a, you know, high sugar form, right? So, yeah, but, but listen carefully. We are not meant as a living organism to consume disaccharides in mass quantity. It's toxic to your body, both pH-wise and also me metabolic-wise. You are meant to eat complex carbohydrates, thinking about like leaves off of trees, right, fruits, vegetables, things like that, salads. That is what we were meant and built to eat. Evolution has driven who we are. We did not evolve with snicker bar trees. Okay, there's no Mountain Dew River anywhere. I haven't seen it, except in Willy Wonka, right? Okay, so you can dream, yes, yeah, so but when you wake up, just welcome back to reality where, you know, you will develop a disease if you put things in your body that you were not naturally evolved to have. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, all right. So a good rule of, of thumb for anybody, if you want to live healthily, think 100 years ago. If it was not a food then, it probably still should not be on your plate today. Okay. All right. So chitin and cellulose. Let's talk about these two right here. I'll, I'll answer silly questions later, I promise. Chitin and, and cellulose, they are complex carbohydrates that provide support. Cellulose is kind of uh, an easy one. We understand that, right? You, you snap a tree twig and it goes what? Snap, right? Okay. So that's what trees and plant life are made of. It gives them that rigid cell wall material. Chitin, though, is found in the shells of insects and the cell walls of mushrooms. And cellulose is found in the cell walls of plants. So when you step on a mushroom, it goes 
squish, right? I don't know what it goes. It does something, okay? But it's not snap like a twig. So there's a different type of uh, complex carbohydrate in mushrooms than is in, let's say, a plant. They're both very good for us, by the way. Like chitin is, is a very good car source of carbohydrates. It takes a long time to break it down. You just got to be careful which mushrooms you eat, obviously, but you get the idea. Now, in a complex organism, cells recognize neighboring cells by the short branch chains of varying sugar units on their outer surface. So carbohydrates are also used as name tags. So, I mean, this is my name tag that says I belong here in Mr. Mason's body, okay? If I did not have this name tag on, what would my body do to me? You ever have somebody put a sign on your back? Okay, so let's pretend, Mr. Gilda, you look like somebody who might have done this before. So let's say I'm walking around and I don't have my name tag on. Mr. Gilda, let's pretend he's a, he's a beta cell, all right? So pretend you put a, a name tag on my back. He's going to put a name tag on my back because I don't have my identity. I don't have my ID badge, okay? And then let's just pretend Kennedy is the killer T cell. Sounds like killer T cells are going to do what? Kill, Kill me. She's literally going to engulf me and digest me, and then I will become part of cellular waste, okay? That's what happens to things that don't have the cell surface marker on them in your body. Anybody know the disease that stops that whole process from happening, what it's called? What is it? HIV, very good. Human immunodeficiency virus, right? That's what it is. What? Well, yeah, that's part of it, but most of it's due to the fact that you're identifying your own cells as form because they have virals in them. So, yeah. All right, so the next category, you guys were off carbohydrates. Refocus, refocus. Can anybody tell me what the monomers of lipids are? Please tell me what the monomers of lipids are. Type it in. See what you learned last year. It's all right. Should have. Anybody know what the monomers of lipids are? If you did your keys, you probably know it. I need 23 answers. I only have nine of you. Come on, I'm waiting. Don't take forever. What are the monomers of lipids? You can be wrong. It's okay. We're here. If you're wrong, that means you'll have learned something at the end of the day. Five, four, three, two, one. 0 0.75, 0 0.67, 0 0.44, 0 0.32. No, I can't get 20. Good Lord, okay. I tried. Protein, no. Fats, no. No, no. Let's see if we got one. Anybody get it? No, no, even no. Well, that's good. We get to learn something. The monomers are known as what are called, it's a fun one to just say, fatty acids. Fatty acids are the monomers right here. What? So lipids consist of chains of carbon atoms that are bonded to each other and the hydrogen atoms and this structure makes lipids repel water. These uh, contain fats, phospholipids, steroids, and waxes. And you look at all of those things, those four things, and you realize that you put them with water and they don't mix, right? Yeah. The only one that you might be confused on would be like phospholipids. What's that? Or steroids. But neither of those would really mix with water. 
we understand fats and waxes. We've all seen a stick of butter. We know that doesn't mix with water. We've all seen a wax, and we understand that repels water. If I told you phospholipids are a barrier around your cells, you would understand they keep water in and keep water out. And if I told you that steroids are part of your cell membrane that is a phospholipid, you'd understand that it's also a lipid, right? Okay? So the main function of lipids is, is going to include storing energy and controlling water molecules. So we're made of 70% water. Is it pretty important that we control where water is and where it is not? Yeah. So we use lipids as barriers for water. Now, the main purpose of fats is to store energy. We understand that. We eat too much energy, we get fat. Pretty simple. Hey, let's look at this word. How do I remember lipids has to do with fat? Here's how I remember. This word literally means sucking fat. Like, that's what it means. But you know, it helps you remember, right? Yeah. Or you remember, or just remember, you know, fat sucks. You know? I, don't know. I don't know. I don't care how you remember it as long as you do. Yes, there you go. Well, I had a good, did you guys see the uh, mo the lunar eclipse this morning? Yeah. That's true. I was almost late for school. I stopped on the side of the road and watched it for like 10 minutes with my daughters, and I was like, oh, we got to go. Yeah, it was hard. You had to go between the clouds. And, yeah. So fats can store energy even more efficiently than carbohydrates, which sounds awesome if we were like entering into an ice age, right? But we're not. So we're in America where we have more food and energy than any other country in the world. And so... We need to be, oh dear Lord, somebody's at the door. PK, what's happening? Can we, can they come see you at lunch? Did you guys have something set up? Okay. They're, they're boycotting you apparently. You come see me at lunch and I'll I'll talk to you. But hey, I gotta finish notes though. You guys got a zippity do. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So I love homecoming week. It's it's not like it disrupts me at all. That's fun. I remember. I remember my homecoming. Twenty years ago. I, wrote, I picked my girlfriend up with a horse. That's all we had. We didn't even have gas back then. We had to walk to school 50 miles in the snow. Oh, shit, this is getting recorded. I don't know. All right. Yeah, go back and figure it out. Okay, so here we go. Back to non-homecoming material. Okay, so... Fat. We know fat stores energy. We get it. You eat too much energy, you get fat. Okay, so liposuction, lipid, fat sucking. Okay. So, the monomers of lipids are fatty acids. Okay. So, the cell's boundary is made up of phospholipids. The, uh, the structure of a cell membrane depends on how its molecule interacts with water. Waxes found on the surfaces of plants and aquatic bird feathers help prevent evaporation of water from the cell of an organism. Now what I want you to do is look at phospholipids here for a minute. You're going to want to draw this with me. Oh, except for that. I don't know what I did there. My pen, I'm going to have to go up there on the board. This is, it is not. It's a, it's a malfunctioning Moby. All right, here we go. So that's a phospholipid right there. Pay attention. This top part, you guys, please. This top part has a phosphate, and somewhere on there is an oxygen. What do we know about oxygen? We talked about it with water. It, it's electronegative, right? Stop right there. Don't even worry about anything else other than that. 
So that means it's going to be attracted to who? You guys get that? Stay with me here. This is a phosphate group that has an oxygen on it, so it's kind of attracted to the positive end of water. Do we understand? The middle part, these are what are called fatty acids, right? And there's two of them in a phospholipid, okay? So here's what the cell membrane looks like. Yes, you should. Somewhere. I don't know until I think I can... Let's just say this continues to go around the whole entire cell, okay? It's a circle. It's a fat bubble, okay? It's essentially what a cell is. It's a fat bubble. All right. So is there water outside of the cell? Everybody say yes. Is there water inside of the cell? Everybody say yes. Okay. So you're telling me that the outside of the phospholipid is attracted to the water, but the inside is what? It's a fat. Do oil and water mix? No. no. So my tails are actually repelled by water, and so they tuck tail and hide in the middle of the cell membrane. So there's two layers in the cell membrane. Two. There has to be, because phospholipid heads are attracted to water, and phospholipid fatty acid tails are repelled by water. Do you guys understand that? Sure is a terrible answer for anybody. Do you understand that, yes or no? Okay. I hate sures. Sure is a deodorant that might not work, right? Raise your hand if you're sure. No? Okay. My don't, I don't allow my daughters to say sure or maybe. Those are like two words that are not allowed in my house. Sure, okay, or maybe, no. You tell me yes or no. I want, a, I want a definitive result here at the end of this discussion. All right. So, folks, these tails are fat, so they hide from water. That makes sense. The heads are attracted because they have this oxygen, which is electronegative, that's attracted to the hydrogen and water, both outside and inside of the cell. So you're going to have this circle or this fat bubble that keeps water in and keeps water out. Every cell in your body has this. Every single part of you, trillions of you, parts of you, are made of these fat bubbles. It's really weird to think that we are just a giant blob of fat bubbles. Even if you're not a fat cell, it doesn't matter. That's what all your cells are made of. We're made of way more fat than we think, right? Is fat pretty darn important to us? Yeah. If you don't eat fat in your diet, guess what? These cells don't work very well. And if you eat the wrong kinds of fats, these become really hard and rigid, and you get, like, Hardening of the arteries, right, and things like that. Okay, we'll talk more about that later. We could talk about that all day, couldn't we? Waxes, we understand, right? Earwax, long carbon chain, earwax. So long, it's very strong, very rigid. So strong and rigid, you can flake it off. That's kind of gross to even think about, right? You can get it with a kid, okay? It's because it's clumpy, right? Just think about it. It's not like an oil. It's not squishy like our fat, like our phospholipids, right? Because these move, right? Don't they? Grab your cheeks. Everybody grab your cheeks. Those move around, don't they? Oh, that's on YouTube, too. Um, so they move. They flex because they're made of like this bubbly fat stuff, right? So your earwax is like this long, rigid molecule. It's like a long carbon chain. It's not as flexible, okay? And this will lead into proteins, but I feel like we're just about running out of time. So I'm going to stop here, okay, and I'm going to say we'll pick up from here tomorrow, and we'll have no homework unless, of course, you want to get ahead. You can always work ahead. You can work ahead, and then you'd be a phospho with two fatty acid tails. Have a seat. Oh, shit.